Hi everyone, I'm Kuvina and welcome to Relativity Part 3. This episode is about relativity of simultaneity. In the last video, we saw how the second postulate of relativity, invariance of C, leads to a phenomenon called time dilation, in which time passes slower when you move faster. We also derived an equation for it, but when we applied it to an example, it led to an apparent contradiction. The issue comes from the other postulate of relativity called the principle of relativity. It tells you that the laws of physics are the same in any inertial reference frame. This means that all physics equations should hold true, and this includes the time dilation equation. So here's what happened. We came up with a hypothetical scenario involving two observers, Mary and Botan. They start off on Earth at the same age of exactly 20. Botan remains on Earth, but Mary takes off in a spaceship, traveling at 0.6 C. Time dilation tells us that Mary ages slower because she's moving, and using the formula, we find that when Botan is 25, Mary will only be 24. But in Mary's own reference frame, she's the stationary one, and Botan is moving at 0.6 C. Using the formula again, we find that when Mary is 24, Botan will only be 23.2. So in one perspective, Botan is older, but in another perspective, Mary is older. This is a contradiction, right? Well, it's correct that these two observations can't both be true at the same time. But the key point is that they don't happen at the same time. You'd think this implies that one happens after the other, but that's not the case either. In order to truly understand what's going on, we need to rethink our linear notion of time. And to do that, we need to go back to the basics. I haven't mentioned it in the series yet, but it's important to note that the speed of light is finite. And since the light is the fastest communication method, it means that information can never travel faster than the speed of light, making instant communication impossible. In a given time, light only goes so far. In fact, there are special names for this distance depending on the time. The distance light goes in one year is called one light year. If you change your units from meters and seconds to light years and years, the formulas simplify. Light itself goes one light year per year, and something like 0.6 C is 0.6 light years per year. In the time dilation equation, this makes C squared equal 1, making the equation simplify, and that's why it's so much easier to do things in terms of the speed of light. Anyway, this finite speed of light has a big effect on how time dilation works in practice. So when I say that Botan sees Mary aging at 0.8 times the speed, that's not exactly true. If Botan sees that Mary is 5 light years away, then what she's actually seeing is the light that Mary emitted 5 years ago, because that's how long it takes for the light to get back to Botan. By the time she sees it, Mary is already way past that point. The key takeaway here is that they can't see each other in real time. If they had some sort of science fiction style instant communication device, then that would cause a contradiction, because if Mary decided on her 24th birthday to call Botan with this device, then would Botan be 25 when she picks up the call, or 23.2? It's impossible to say, because the situation itself is impossible. In real life though, this isn't an issue, because communication takes time. And to see exactly how this resolves the issue, it helps to think about time in terms of events. In the past, we only considered the events of Botan turning 25 and Mary turning 24. From Botan's perspective, these two events occur at the same time, but from Mary's perspective, Botan is only 23.2 at that time, and doesn't turn 25 until much later. This is considered relativity of simultaneity, because the two events are simultaneous in one reference frame, but not in a different one. But it doesn't actually cause any contradictions, because there's a distance between them, making instant communication impossible. The only way you could find a contradiction is if instant communication was possible, and the only way for that to be the case 
as if there was no distance in between them. In other words, the two events would have to happen not only at the same time, but also in the same place. So with that knowledge in place, let's see if we can still find any contradictions. Even though they don't have instant communication, they do still have light speed communication, and that seems like it might be an issue. So we're going to introduce a third event. So on Mary's 24th birthday, she's going to send a signal to Botan that travels at the speed of light. The event in question is when the signal finally reaches Botan, which should happen sometime after it's sent out. We'll start off in Botan's reference frame. So again, Mary and Botan both start off on Earth at the same age of exactly 20. This is position 0 and time 0. Then Mary leaves in her ship at 0.6c. The time dilation formula tells us that she ages at 0.8 times the rate. So after one year, Mary ages by 0.8 years, Botan ages by one year, and Mary travels 0.6 light years. This process continues every year until we get to year 5. By this time, Mary is at position 0.6 times 5, or 3 light years. And she's also 24, so she sends out that signal. It travels to the left at 1 light year per year, so its velocity is negative 1. It starts at position 3, so it will take 3 more years for it to reach Botan, by which time she is exactly 28. So the events of Botan turning 28 and Botan receiving Mary's signal are simultaneous. Since those two events happened at the same time, and in the same place, they better be simultaneous in Mary's reference frame, or else we have a contradiction. So let's switch to Mary's perspective. So the way she sees it, Botan is the one going 0.6c, and aging at 0.8 times the rate. So after one year, Botan ages 0.8 years, Mary ages one year, and Botan's position changes by negative 0.6, because she's going left. This process repeats every year until year 4. At this time, Botan is at position negative 2.4, and Mary turns 24, which means it's time to send out the signal. Now we have to figure out when it will reach Botan, but that's more tricky this time. You might think it would take 2.4 years, but Botan's also moving, so her position is different by the time it gets to where she was. The way we figure it out is by making equations for their positions and finding when they're equal. So we have three variables to worry about. T is time since the signal was sent, B is Botan's position, and S is the signal's position. Since Botan starts at negative 2.4 and travels at velocity negative 0.6, her equation is b equals negative 0.6t minus 2.4. The signal starts at position 0 and has velocity negative 1, so its equation is just s equals negative t. We want to find when b equals s, which we do by substituting both their right sides in, giving us negative t equals negative 0.6t minus 2.4. Now we just have to solve for t, which is pretty easy, and we get t equals 6. The signal was sent in year 4, so 6 years later is year 10. Botan receives the signal at position negative 6, and although Mary is 30, Botan ages at 0.8 times the rate, making her 28. So sure enough, the events of Botan turning 28 and her receiving the signal are still simultaneous, even after we switch reference frames. When we compare the two timelines, you can see that the events of Botan turning 25 and Mary turning 24 are simultaneous in one, but not the other. This doesn't matter though, because they occur at different locations in space. The other two events happen in the same place, but this doesn't matter because they're still simultaneous in both reference frames. I think this is just such an amazing result. Time dilation seems like it would cause contradictions, but it can only do so for events in the same location, and when you come up with a scenario and do the calculations, everything works out fine. Relativity of simultaneity is one of the weirdest parts of relativity, and it can be hard to wrap your mind around, but something I find extremely helpful is the following sentence. 
The only way to guarantee two events are simultaneous in all reference frames is if they also happen in the same place. And with that, we'll add it to the list of rules as number 4. But something about relativity of simultaneity might still just not sit right with you. Maybe you accept that when two observers drift apart, so do their notions of time, and they can each see the other one aging slowly. But what would happen if they reunited? What if Mary left Earth, but then turned around and came back? From Botan's perspective, Mary is moving both there and back, meaning she stays young. From Mary's perspective, Botan is the moving one for both parts of the trip, meaning she stays young. So when they reunite, who will be younger? Since they're back at the same place again, it can no longer be explained with relativity of simultaneity. So how do we resolve this? Well, this is actually the most famous paradox in all of relativity. The one and only twin paradox. If you want a simple answer, then the two perspectives differ because Mary experiences a force when she accelerates to turn around. Since Mary accelerates, it means her perspective is not an inertial reference frame, so the same rules no longer apply. Botan never accelerates though, so her perspective is still an inertial reference frame, and we can apply the equation to find that Mary will in fact be younger. This explanation might be enough to satisfy you, but to get the full picture, we need to examine the scenario in more detail, and to do that requires more tools like length contraction and relativistic addition of velocities. So those will be the subjects of the next few episodes, and the twin paradox will get its own episode after those. For now though, this is the end of part 3. Relativity of simultaneity is one of the hardest things to wrap your mind around but I hope this was a good explanation. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you'll be recommended part 4 when it comes out. Also, if you have any questions about relativity of simultaneity, leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!